Hi everyone, it's Ash from FPL Hints, here to help you construct your wildcard team ahead of game week six. As always, if you're able to like, share and subscribe, that will be greatly appreciated. Now, spoiler alert, I've already used my wildcard, but I thought it best to share some ideas because there are a lot of good variations with the fixture swings from game week six onwards. So look at the games ahead and then I'll look at the variations in play that are worth considering. I've got some of the players as a result of my game week four wildcard, but there are also those opportunities that now um, are appearing for these new uh, fixture turnarounds. So looking at the fixtures first and foremost, these um, red block and green block games, as you can see, as outlined, are from fpl.team. Be sure to check uh, them out as well. So I mentioned with the fixture turnaround, there is a significant shift for many teams. So with Arsenal in particular, from game week six onwards, generous fixture run with Leicester, Southampton and Bournemouth in the next three. And then with Aston Villa, they've already had the generous fixture, fixture run kick in. Um, they've got, of course, United at home, Fulham away, but then they've got Bournemouth at home as well. Again, being mindful that both Arsenal and Aston Villa are also involved in the Champions League as well. So that is worth factoring in as well. And you've got Bournemouth, who... Uh, with their situation right now, Southampton at home, Leicester away in game week six, and they've got those very tricky uh, red block games. But those that have got Semenyo, who might be considering him, they look at the fixtures beyond the red block games, Brentford, Brighton, Wolves, and then Ipswich and West Ham further down the line. But really Brentford, they have a, an extremely generous run from game week six right up until game week 13. And then Brighton, who had some reasonable fixtures, they're going to hit some red block games from game week six onwards. Whereas Chelsea, they're coming towards the end of their green block games. And then they're going to have some tricky games ahead. So again, factoring in that game week six is a great opportunity to hop off certain players and hop on certain players. And you've got Crystal Palace, who have had some tricky games to date, but then they have got some green block games from... Uh, game week eight onwards and then you've got Everton who've already got the generous fixture uh, run kick in but as you can see that really carries on all the way up until Wolves in game week 14 and Everton haven't had the best of form to date but if you're targeting fixtures over form definitely worth considering as well and then we've got Fulham who had some reasonable games to date and apart from Man City in game week seven they kind of dodge a lot of red block games from that point onwards up until the next few game weeks and then Ipswich, very generous fixture run after Aston Villa. Again, literally just one red block game for them up until game week 16. And then you've got Leicester after the Arsenal match, generous run of games for them as well with only one red block game for them right at the end of that run. You've got Liverpool, Fairly reasonable run of games for them. Got Arsenal uh, coming up, but then apart from that, fairly reasonable matches as a whole. And then you've got Man City, very generous run of games. Again, Newcastle at St. James's Park, but after that, green block after green block games. But when you're Manchester City, there'll be hardly any uh, red block games. And then got Manchester United. Okay, Tottenham and Aston Villa, but then very generous run of games for them. With Newcastle, it gets trickier. Man City, Chelsea and Arsenal in these um, upcoming game weeks. Nottingham Forest, who've had that very generous run right from the start. Of course, they've got Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, Arsenal at the Emirates and Man City at the Etihad. But take those games away. Fixture run seems reasonable. And then you've got Southampton, fairly mixed bag there. So potential option for rotation, really, if you're going to uh, rotate a cheap defensive asset spurs very generous run of games um, we could even factor in the united match but really from game week seven right up until was that game week 16 definitely worth considering spurs assets you got west ham who had a bit of patchy form of late fairly mixed bag for them and you got wolves who have had a very difficult run of games and they've still got some difficult games from game week six onwards with liverpool and man city in the next uh three games but then after that it turns 
a green block for them. So with all of that said, I want to basically construct a draft with the FDR factored in and also the uh, fixtures that are basically going to be factored in beyond the Premier League. So, you know, Champions League football and cup commitments as well. So what I've switched over here is to show you basically a clean slate of players that I'm going to pick. Again, I'm not going to confirm these from my side because I've already activated the wild card. But, but it'll be interesting to see how many of the players that I have that I'd be willing to pick in a game week six hypothetical wildcard. So the first player that really catches uh, my eye is David Dreyer. Absolutely sensational form in the Premier League this season. He's already picked, what, three clean sheets in the opening games. An absolute no-nonsense pick for me. Cheap entry into the Arsenal defence. At the time of recording, five and a half million. I'm pretty certain after uh, a matter of time, he is going to get a price increase. So in he comes in this hypothetical wildcard draft. And to be honest with you, I might even try and shoehorn him in with my own actual team. But we'll see what happens there. Disappointed with uh, Ramsdale. His, um, the per well, I was going to say that um, the per his predecessor who conceded very late against Ipswich but then the sub goalie I've got right now is Mark Flecken now with him the problem is that clean sheets have been well non-existent for Brentford but if you look at the fixture run for Arsenal and when is it that I'd want to bench uh, David Raya live at home I would Newcastle away Chelsea away pretty much starting okay man united at home as well so we're looking at uh, 9 10 and 14 potentially and then you'd play all the other matches so i look at the fixtures for flecken 9 10 and 14 just confirm that here as well he's got ipswich at home fulham away he's got aston villa away so excluding the Aston Villa match, fair bit of rotation there. Just looking at the trending players at the time of recording as well, pretty certain David Raya will be up there. Got Sanchez, 4.6 million. Just looking at those fixtures, 9, 10 and 14. Let's see if it works with him. Again, I'm not going to say, oh, these are set in stone. I'll, I'll look for a bit of variation as well with the players that I'm going to pick. But in 9, 10, 14, Newcastle, United... Yeah, it doesn't really work with him. And then further down the line, you've got the likes of Sells. I mean, out of push, let's see what we've got with Sells in 9, 10 and 14. Got Leicester away, West Ham at home. Ah, oh, you've got Man City there as well. But as, you know, across the board, you've got a very generous fiction run for Flecken. Let's just look at Henderson at a push here as well, because I know Crystal Palace have some reasonable fixtures. So uh, Spurs at home, Wolves away, it was switch away. I guess that isn't too bad. So the lack of clean sheets with um, Palace is also a bit of a concern there as well. I'll have Flecken as the backup goalie, but Henderson clearly is another option here in this wildcard six uh, hypothetical draft. So I'll keep him there for now. So on to the defense now in terms of the options that are available i'm going to try and keep it as light as possible so that i can redistribute funds further up the pitch so i am going to have some like 4.0 so one 4.0 that i will uh, restore for this draft is uh, jacob greaves of ipswich so he'll effectively be a perennial sub three but then he's got a very generous run of fixtures could i put yeah, against Everton at home in eight, Leicester in 10, and then maybe Palace in 14 at a push, Bournemouth in 15, Wolves in 16, but, you know, potential considerations. So, you know, sub three where you could potentially start him. So I think it's fair to like just factor him in as well. Now, I do strive for balance with these uh, drafts that I've done. And I want really longevity in the players. So that's one 4.0. Now, this might be a bit, shall we say, I was going to say controversial, but 
this might be um, a bit too much for some, but I'm actually going to pick two 4.0s in this defense. Again, Greaves is a sub three, and the other player looking about vice. Again, the fixtures for Leicester look quite appealing. You could potentially start him in seven, in nine, in ten, just, just to call them out. Bournemouth in seven, Forest in nine, Ipswich in ten, and then, yeah, pretty much sub two, sub three material. Wolves at home in game week 17. So let's just try it. I want to see what kind of players I can pick further upfield. So Valt Feiss and Greaves are the two 4.0 defenders. So ideally, I'd want to have some very reasonable 4.5-ish defenders as well. So one of the players I'm going to pick is Rico Lewis. And at the time of recording, he is someone that has had a healthy number of minutes under Pep this season. Of course, X-Mins can be an issue with him. The risk of being subbed and rotation as a whole. We've got Champions League football with Man City as well. But I'm willing to have him as that third defender, so long as I've got Greaves and Feiss, who have surprisingly reasonable games. And I wouldn't obviously want to start Greaves or Feiss unless, let's say, one of my starting defenders had a very dark red block game. But I think it's definitely worth having Rico Lewis if you've got, dare I say it, playable sub three and sub two players. Again, I know it's controversial. It won't be for many FPL managers, but I want to try and make it work in this instance. So let's not beat around the bush as well. So I've got Rico Lewis of Man City. Of course, I'm going to have Haaland in this team as well. So just restoring him there as well. Again, Champions League football, he is the only quote unquote like actual orthodox uh, striker at Man City in the strictest sense. But again, got Arsenal at home, Newcastle away. But then beyond that, those green block games, Fulham at home, Southampton, Wolves, Bournemouth, you'd pretty much captain him as a no look captain pick. So it would be crazy not to have him. So with those. Uh, players I've got there, six in total. We've used uh, well, uh, 30, about 38 or so million pounds of the budget. So with how it, I've got it right now, I also want another premium player. And I'm going to go to Aston Villa, someone who has shown a fair bit of form of late, finally. Also has the Champions League football. And it is Ollie Watkins. 37 goal involvements last season as a reminder in the Premier League and three goals in his last two games with the start of the generous fixture run. I think it'd be crazy not to have him if you're going to wildcard in game week six. Of course, Villa have uh, Duran as well, who's been a fantastic super sub for Villa. And I think the main thing here with Watkins in particular is that Watkins is the nailed on starter, no doubt. Um, despite Champions League commitments as well. So I think it makes perfect sense to capitalise on getting him in. And it's not too late to get him in if you've missed out on the previous two games. But I think it would be really crazy not to have Ollie Watkins considering his form and also the upcoming games as well. So I'm fairly content with that pick. So what I'm going to try and do, I've got the premium Man City player, I've got the premium Villa player, I'm going to try and have attacking Liverpool, attacking Chelsea and attacking Arsenal cover as well. So this might stretch my funds a fair bit, but let's see if I can make it work. But before I do that, I'm going to go on to my next striker. So I'm going to go for three playable strikers in this draft. I'm going to go to Everton in particular. And we did see that generous fixture run that Everton have. And Calvert-Lewin comes to mind with him. Of course, he blanked in his last game, but before that, he's had three goal involvements in his last two. Everton need to win. Palace and Newcastle at home in the next two. Got Ipswich and Fulham at home, Southampton, and you got West Ham as well. Brentford, all the way up to Wolves in early December. Very generous run of games for Calvert Lewin, almost like a set and forget striker, shall we say in many respects, as your third striker. 
with that fixture run. So I think in he comes. And again, some will say, oh, isn't it optimal to have like five midfielders? Probably is. But just can't really look beyond Haaland, fixtures and form, Watkins, fixture and form, and Calvert Lewin as well. To different price points, you've got the most expensive player, someone who at 9.0 million could probably say is borderline premium. And then you've got Calvert Lewin at the budget end as well. So with the budget, 47.4 million to go. And uh, we've got seven players to pick. So again, you know, just <laughs> I, I want to be absolutely clear that the defense might be fairly light, but I want to make this work because of the fixture run and also the form of many of these players. So the next player that I think it would be crazy not to have if you haven't already got him in. Let's, I mean, if I just go to the trending players, he's probably right up there. All players transfers in by round and midfielders. There he is, Saka, ten million pounds. Of course, with Saka, Champions League football as well. But then you look at the fixtures from game week six: Leicester and Southampton back to back home. So potential captaincy option there as well, if need be. Got Bournemouth away, and I know often Saka is yellow flagged. It looks like he's picked up a knock, but he's been one of Arsenal's regular starters. And if Arsenal are going to score, really, he is going to be involved in some shape or form. So I think Saka comes in. That's a no-look transfer there. Again, hemorrhaging the funds. 37.4 million left to fill in the remaining uh, six players. But I'm pretty certain I can make it work. The next player I'm going to pick is Ice Cold Palmer. So I'm just going to restore him because he's already in my team right now. 10.6 million at the time of recording. Again, you've got the green block game with Brighton and Forest. It does get tricky. I won't lie to you after that. Liverpool, Newcastle, United. Now, one of the trends I noticed with Cole Palmer, he, he had a very good knack last season of scoring against the teams that were newly promoted low end of the table. But I, I do feel that in many respects, he's fixture proof as well. He's on penalties and he isn't crucially in Chelsea's conference league squad. So he'll get regular starts in the Premier League. I think he is someone that is worth considering, even though Chelsea's green block games are coming to an end. So you've got to pick him in as well. So that's Saka, Palmer, Watkins and Haaland. But we are going to get another, another Liverpool player. Unfortunately, it's not going to be uh, Mohamed Salah, but Diaz, who remarkably has been in absolutely sensational form for Liverpool. Look at that double digit haul in five, double digit haul in three, in two. If you had him at the start of the season, you're absolutely loving it. And one of the reasons why I didn't get him, because I was concerned that after Copa America, he might get managed minutes, had Mohamed Salah as well. Well, to be fair, Jota in my team as well. So I kind of went for who I thought was a safer pick as a second attacking Liverpool player. I then did my own actual wildcard, bought in Trent, to cover Jota, which paid off in game week five because Jota obviously zero points and Trent hauled. But I kind of feel that with Diaz, probably a missed opportunity there, despite him blanking game week four. I think he is someone that is definitely worth considering. Can Diaz cover Salah? I think that's something that uh, remains to be seen, but clearly right now he is. But then I saw a comment on my ex feed where someone said, oh, actually, can Salah cover Diaz? So I think that's worth considering. So Saka, Palmer and Diaz, and his price will hit 8 million um, in no time if he carries on this sensational form. So I said to you, Liverpool attacking cover, Chelsea, Arsenal, Villa and Man City attacking cover. And you're probably wondering, well, you've got four spots to fill now and you've got £19 million in the bank. Yes, Harry Winks will be one of the players I'll be getting as a, dare we say, sub one, sub two player at a push. Now, I think this might concern many because it's like, hold on, you've got Harry Winks, you've got Feiss and you've got Greaves. Well, I've said with Feiss and Greaves, I potentially have the option to start them, which will force me into a 4-3-3 formation potentially. Of course, Winks, I wouldn't want to start him at all. But the generous fixture run for Leicester and Ipswich, they do become options. Again, that leaves me with £14.5 million in the bank. So I've got to factor in my pathway here that, yes, I can get a 5.0 um, 
defender, then four and a half, and then I'm clutching straws. But I think in this instance, if I actually just go to my uh, midfielders here, and I just if I just sort by 5.2 as the max, clearly Rogers is absolutely flying here. You got some other options as well. Generous fixture run. And Rogers, in terms of X mins in particular, look at that 90, 90, 90, 90. So, yeah, that is a bit crazy. A Champions League level midfielder at 5.1 million in an attacking position getting regular starts. I think Rogers does come in as my, shall we say, fourth midfielder. And that leaves me with 9.4 million to spend on these remaining two defensive slots. So looking at the trending players, first of all, one of the players that I would have been interested in was Ina, but his price has increased, um, unfortunately, from 4.4 million. You've got Kanate, another one who was considering, but his price has gone up as well. So again, can't push to Gabriel. Got Mazrawi as well. Wasn't expecting him to get so many starts, but there we go. And then just further down, got Ezri Konza for... Aston Villa, who of course scored randomly in game week five. I believe that was his ninth goal in like over 300 competitive games at club level. So I think with Contra in particular, looking at the fixtures, I'd start him against Ipswich, Fulham, Bournemouth. 10 11 becomes tricky. So let's say 7, 10. And 11, I would try not to start him. Then you look at about five, seven, 10, 11. You've got Bournemouth, Ipswich. Okay, you've got Man United there. And just look at uh, Greaves for Ipswich, seven, 10, and 11. You've got West Ham away, Leicester at home, got Ipswich. So Esri Konsa might be the default person to go to but let's just see who else we've got here as options we've got luca dean but his price has gone up we've got some other interesting options as well i think pedro porro would have been a player i would have considered let's just see if i can make it work i've got a feeling it won't work please yeah <laughs> i haven't got enough money there so yeah out he goes canate for defensive liverpool cover i think is definitely an option here that leaves me with 4.3 million in the bank, which is a bit of a concern because I'm then relying on what um, a 4.0 defender, which I don't want to do because I've already maxed my allocation there. So we're looking at 9.4 million in the bank for these two remaining spots. Just going to Ina for the fixtures. It's really what seven, twelve. 11 and 14 but i think the key thing here is with the budget defense in particular that i'd really want to basically rotate the defense as much as i can effectively it, with with the options that i've got available and yeah let's just pick esri Contra as well why not as my uh, defensive set so got what a comfortable 0 0.4 million in the bank if i really wanted to i could even upgrade rogers I say upgrade, but, you know, he isn't the worst pick in the world. But let's just have a look at the 5.5 million options. Okay, you've got Semenyo, who I've just miss, missed out on in terms of funds, but I've got him in my actual FPL team. You've got Smith Rowe, absolutely sensational in terms of the points he's scoring on the minutes he's playing on. You've got McNeil, wouldn't want to double up on Everton attack. I think that... Calvert-Lewin should be enough, but yeah, at a push, Adama Torre probably wouldn't want him. It's, it's an interesting one. In, ter in terms of 5.5 options, I mean, I could get Semenyo, but then I'm really down to, in fact, I, I, I'd have to get rid of Feiss, actually. Let's just see if I can make this work. Let's get Semenyo, just and get the fixtures once again. Because I'd have to start him basically against what Southampton or oh, uh, Arsenal in eight Villa. I mean, it's not too bad. Let's get Semenyo. Let's make it work. I don't. I don't want a super light um, midfield. 
4.1 million to spend with my budget of course your budget will vary you might have had like lots of price rises so you could probably push to a 4.5 million defender here or you might actually not have enough price rises and you're down to what well, you can't even get a 4.0 here but let's just go to the 4.0 options super quickly to see in terms of the defense who we've got available just to make this work again i'm just giving you variations here as well oh feist i could make feist work here with the funds that i've got available again x mins safe and there we go i've maxed out the budget there as well david dryer as the set and forget goalkeeper but then opportunities to start flecken if need be for some of the trickier games that arsenal have after the next uh, three games and then this rotating defense of lewis who is set and forget but if he doesn't play you've got other options you've got uh, Ina and Konza as the starting defenders but again if they get tricky games you go to Greaves you go to Feiss in the event when they have green block games so you would be starting those players and all of those players Lewis, Ina, Konza as a whole have very reasonable games so again this is not for the faint-hearted this isn't for those that love having a Trent and a Poro in their squads but why have we got it so that we've got this rotating uh, defense it's purely because we're funding this midfield of Palmer, Diaz, Saka and Semenyo but not only that it's this front three of Watkins, Calvert-Lewin and Haaland and that is a lot of funds for the players that you've got here and I, I'll ask you in your wildcard six draft. So you probably won't see many here with such a strong front seven. Again, Winks, sub one, sub two. Greaves is a sub two, sub three. And Feiss is really a sub one, sub two, at the very best, sub three as well. So you're, you're starting with three forwards as a default. And you're starting with four midfielders as a default. With your three starting defenders, yeah, you know, by default, you'd be starting Konza, you'll be starting Aina, and you'll be starting Lewis. But you've got the option, if you really wanted to, start Greaves and Feiss as well, in the event one of those defenders have a uh, red block game. So, yeah, there you have it. That is my const oh, attempt at constructing a wildcard six draft. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Have I got the balance right? Have I got the balance wrong? Is this a good way to maximize the value in those fixtures that um, are going to take place in game week six onwards? So just to remind you on screen, there are those fixtures. As we've discussed earlier on in this video, there are some great opportunities here. And I did say I do a quick mini SWOT analysis. Clearly with the team at hand, the defense is very weak, but then it's not weak to the point that you can't really rely on it. You can still rely on it, just as it hasn't got a premium defender. Clearly, the, the strengths here are that heavy set front seven, and that's what you're funding. You're not relying on starting the 4.0 defenders, may I add, but you've got them in the event you could start them because they do, do have some reasonable games, but the lack of form that they have is somewhat of a concern. But yeah, just keep that in mind as well. You've got David Dreyer and Goal, who's propping them up. And Fleck. And if you really wanted to, you could go for a 4.0 keeper, risking in the event that Rye doesn't start. And you could probably bump up one of these 4.5s into a 5.0 defender at a push. But I think that there is a very uh, interesting opportunity here to capitalize on these green block games for many of these teams and hopefully allow you to do something different. And that draft that I've just constructed is for those that are looking to do something that is outside of the box. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Have I got the balance right? Have I got the balance wrong? Is there someone I've missed out on altogether? And what other threats does this squad face? And how much longevity does it have? As always, if you're able to like, share and subscribe, that'll be greatly appreciated.